Airports are fascinating places, aren't they? Hubs of global connection where millions of people pass through each year, taking off and landing from all corners of the world. They're places of excitement, anticipation and sometimes even a little anxiety. But what about when these bustling hubs fall silent? Today, we're embarking on a journey to the world's most mysteriously abandoned airports, each one a monument to the wax and wane of human ambition and a stark testimony to how quickly things can change. From Cyprus to Spain, Germany to the United States, these vast, eerily quiet spaces whisper stories of optimism, economy, war and political power plays. So fasten your seatbelts as we prepare for departure into the realm of the abandoned, the desolate, the forgotten. Orbiting back to our first locale, let's delve deeper into the ghost airport of Cyprus, the Nicosia International Airport. Opening its doors in the 1930s, it was the island's key entry point, offering a warm welcome to millions of tourists and locals alike. But when the Turkish invasion happened in 1974, Nicosia was abruptly abandoned and placed in the buffer zone between the Greek and Turkish parts of Cyprus. Its eerie quietness is amplified by the Cyprus conflict's ongoing tension, rendering the airport an imposing relic of history and a fascinating site of global interest. One of the most captivating aspects of the Nicosia Ghost Airport is the uncanny preservation of its infrastructure. Imagine stepping into a 70s-era movie set, complete with a rusting, trident sunjet abandoned mid-evacuation on the tarmac. Other elements frozen in time include check-in desks, departure boards, and even a dusty, dated, duty-free shop. The UN now maintains the airport, ensuring its quiet preservation, adding an extra layer of mystique to this already fascinating location. Exploring it from afar, one can almost hear the phantom hum of jet engines and the bustle of passengers from decades past. Now let's take a flight of imagination to sunny Spain and to the Ciudad Real Central Airport, an infrastructure leviathan that today echoes with a silence almost as grand as its initial ambitions. Construction of this airport started in 2006, just a year before the global financial crisis hit. It was built with the idea of alleviating pressure from Madrid's busy Barajas airport with an eye-watering cost of over 1 billion euros. A rail link connecting it to Madrid was planned, but never completed. Quite optimistic, right? However, this optimism turned out to be unfounded. What's fascinating about this airport is the grand scale of its construction that sharply contrasts with its subsequent downfall. Despite a sprawling four-kilometer runway that can accommodate the largest airliners, including the massive Airbus A380, the airport shut its doors just a few years after its grand opening in 2008 due to the lack of passenger traffic. The story doesn't end there, though. In 2015, it was auctioned off for a mere 10,000 euros, a dramatic fall from grace for an airport once heralded as a solution to Spain's aviation needs. So why did it fail? Many factors contributed, but one key element was location. Even though it was branded as central, Ciudad Real is located over 200 kilometers from Madrid, not exactly convenient for a city airport. And despite the planned high-speed rail link, the reality was that it was easier and faster for passengers to use Madrid's existing airports. Today, the empty terminal buildings and vacant runways serve as a poignant reminder of the airport that was built on a dream, but sadly, never took flight. But now let's jet off to Germany and land at Berlin's Tempelhof Airport, a place laden with history and fraught with mystery. Tempelhof was once one of the busiest airports in the world and it's still one of the most iconic. You see, this is not just any abandoned airport, it is a relic of the cold era. Tempelhof was originally built in the 1920s but came into prominence under the German regime which massively expanded the airport as part of the military's ambitious plans to showcase German prowess. The airport's main building with its monumental curved facade was one of the largest structures in the world when it was built, and it remains an imposing sight today. But Tempelhof is perhaps best known for its role in the Berlin airlift of 1948 to 1949, when Allied forces used the airport to deliver vital supplies to the citizens of West Berlin, who were cut off by a Soviet blockade. Over 200,000 flights were made in and out of Tempelhof during the airlift, providing a literal lifeline to the city. Despite its historical significance, the airport officially closed its doors in 2008. Why? The reasons are many. The airport's central location made expansion impossible. Newer and larger airports were built to accommodate Berlin's growing needs, 
and the maintenance of such a gigantic structure was deemed financially unviable. Let's continue our journey to the sun-drenched country of Greece, landing at the now silent Elinikon International Airport in Athens. Elinikon once served as the international gateway to Greece and a bustling hub for Olympic Airways, the national carrier. Its fascinating history, however, is now confined to memory. Elinikon has a past dating back to the late 1930s where it began as an airbase. Later, it grew into the primary airport for Athens, seeing millions of travelers throughout its operational lifespan. It was renovated for the 2004 Olympic Games in Athens, with one terminal being transformed into a venue for indoor sports such as basketball and fencing. However, as the 21st century dawned, a more modern and larger facility, Athens International Airport, was developed to meet the growing demands of international travel. This led to Elinikon's closure in 2001, just over six decades after its opening. In our ongoing journey through the world's mysteriously abandoned airports, we now land in Spain, home of the adventurous Don Quixote. Only this time it's not a knight errant we're exploring, but an airport that shares his name. Don Quixote Airport, also known as Ciudad Real Central Airport. Planned as Spain's first private international airport, the idea was grand. A major air hub located in the region of Castilla-La Mancha, known primarily for its windmills and Don Quixote's imaginary giants. With a runway long enough to accommodate the world's largest passenger airliner, the Airbus A380, the ambitions for this airport were sky high. Unfortunately, the reality was a stark contrast to the dreams that initiated its construction. Opening in 2008, just as the world was hit by a financial crisis and coupled with its location, which was far from major cities and lacked sufficient public interest, the airport struggled to attract both airlines and passengers. A mere three years after its opening, the airport ceased operations. Next on our journey through the world's mysteriously abandoned airports, we travel across the Atlantic to Denver, Colorado to explore the story of Stapleton Airport. Once bustling with activity, this airport now exists only in the memories of those who once frequented it. Stapleton Airport was Denver's primary airport from 1929 to 1995, growing over the years from a modest municipal airport into a major transportation hub. It saw the transformation of aviation history, from propeller-driven aircraft to jets, from the dawn of commercial aviation to its coming of age. Its strategic location made it an important stop for coast-to-coast -coast flights, and at its peak it was one of the busiest airports in the US. The airport was witness to a period of tremendous growth, becoming the main hub for Continental Airlines and later serving as a significant operation base for United Airlines. But as air travel increased, Stapleton Airport's limitations began to show. Its runway layout and landlocked location prevented further expansion and led to noise pollution concerns. As the 21st century approached, it became clear that a larger, more modern airport was needed, and so Denver International Airport was born. With its opening in 1995, Stapleton Airport was shut down. Today, the land where Stapleton Airport once stood has been transformed into a bustling urban development featuring residential housing, parks, and commercial buildings. While most of the airport's infrastructure has been demolished and replaced, a few remnants remain, including the old control tower that now serves as part of a restaurant. From the sprawling metropolis of Denver, we venture into the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean for our next destination, the isolated Johnston Atoll Airport. This small and remote airfield, located on one of the Johnston Atoll's four islands, embodies a haunting allure and a story intertwined with some of the most ominous chapters in human history. Johnston Atoll Airport, a single runway stretching across Johnston Island, is nearly 1,300 miles southwest of Honolulu, Hawaii. The atoll was claimed by the U.S. under the Guano Islands Act of 1856, a law that allowed the U.S. to claim uninhabited islands containing guano deposits. Though no significant guano was found, the atoll soon found a purpose. During World War II, the Johnston Atoll became a critical air and naval base, and the airport was constructed. Post-war, it became even more essential, albeit for more controversial reasons. The airport and its surroundings were transformed into the Johnston Atoll Chemical Agent Disposal System, Jacquards, the first facility of its kind built by the US to incinerate chemical weapons. 
For over three decades, the atoll was a storage and disposal site for chemical munitions, including Agent Orange. The last disposal operation happened in 2000, and the airport was abandoned in 2005, with control of the atoll given to the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Today, the island is a national wildlife refuge, and the abandoned airport and its buildings are strictly off-limits. The structures have been left to decay, a ghostly reminder of the atoll's contentious past. Next, we journey to a place where the turmoil of geopolitical conflicts has left an indelible mark, the Gaza International Airport in Palestine. Gaza International Airport, also known as Yasser Arafat International Airport, once stood as a symbol of Palestinian autonomy. Inaugurated in 1998 by Yasser Arafat himself, the airport, with its bright and modern design, was built with the hope of fostering economic growth and connecting the isolated Gaza Strip with the rest of the world. The single runway stretching 3,050 meters was capable of handling 700,000 passengers per year, but this shining beacon of optimism would not last long. Barely two years after its inauguration, the airport became a casualty of the Second Intifada, a period of intensified Israeli-Palestinian conflict that started in late 2000. Israeli forces bulldozed the airport's radar station and control tower, leaving the runway pockmarked with craters to prevent its use. Despite attempts to renovate the airport over the years today, it stands abandoned. The runway remains scarred, and the once bustling terminal building is a shell of its former self, serving as a stark reminder of the region's ongoing conflict and the airport's former glory. Now let's transport ourselves to Canada, where we find another abandoned hub of aviation history, the Mirabel International Airport. This airport story is one of ambitious goals unfulfilled, resulting in a spectacularly vast and strikingly quiet expanse. Mirabel International Airport, located in Montreal, was once destined to be one of the biggest airports in the world. In the late 1960s, Montreal was experiencing a boom in air travel leading city planners to conceive of an airport that would handle this growth and set Montreal on the global stage. They set aside an enormous 398 square kilometers, an area larger than the entire city of Montreal for its development. Mirabel opened in 1975 amidst great fanfare. It was state-of-the-art, boasting the world's largest air terminal at the time, and it was expected to handle 60 million passengers annually by the year 2000. But Mirabel's grand ambitions never took flight. Its distance from downtown Montreal and the lack of efficient public transportation made it less appealing than its conveniently located predecessor, the Dorval Airport, now known as Montreal Pierre Elliott Trudeau International Airport. Additionally, the anticipated explosion in air travel over Montreal never materialized to the expected levels. Over time, airlines began pulling out favoring the Dorval Airport, and by 2004, Mirabel had ceased passenger operations altogether. Today, Mirabel's massive terminal lies abandoned and largely demolished, its futuristic design now a relic of the past. However, the airport does continue to serve as a cargo airport and houses an aircraft assembly plant, but the grand visions of it bustling with international passengers remain a distant dream lost to history. Finally, we venture back to Spain, this time to the eastern coast and the curious case of the Castellón Costa Azahar Airport. Now this, this is a story of misplaced optimism and grandiose dreams that left an airport standing desolate. Construction for the Castellón Costa Azahar Airport started in 2004. Carlos Fabra, the local political leader and driving force behind the project, envisioned the airport as a hub for tourists and to boost the economy of the Castellón province. The airport was built at a cost of around 150 million euros, complete with modern facilities, a long runway and even a 24-meter tall statue of Fabra himself welcoming visitors. Everything was seemingly set for takeoff. However, the airport's opening in 2011 coincided with Spain's crippling economic crisis. The timing couldn't have been worse. No airlines had agreed to operate out of the airport, leaving the brand new infrastructure deserted and silent. For over four years, not a single commercial flight took off or landed at Castellón Costa Azaha. The airport quickly became a symbol of Spain's ghost airports and the country's reckless spending ahead of the economic downturn. It also didn't help that Carlos Fabra was later convicted on tax fraud charges. And as always, thanks for watching.